Hey guys, how are you doing? Welcome to the sixth video of the Golang URL shortener project backend series. In this video, we'll complete the shorten.go file and then we'll also work on our Docker file. <clears throat> All right. So coming back uh, to the shorten.go file, I have found a very small mistake that I made in one of the previous videos. And it's that um, on line number 40, values equal to art.get database.ctx.c.ip. This thing, <clears throat> needs to close out here firstly and uh, second thing is that this is kind of redundant in the sense if you have called the value here uh, you don't need to again call the value here but i'm just going to leave it um, in for now but just make that fix that i just made that fix for the bracket and <clears throat> i'm going to just continue with the entire program okay so here uh, what you need to do now is um we had done quite a bit in the last video, right? And now what you want to do, you want to start creating the response that you want to send back from this function. So how do you do that? So you say response is equal to response. And you'll create the response, which will have the URL. It will have the custom short in case you are sending something. It will have the expiry, the rate limit, uh, sorry, which is expiry. It'll have the X rate remaining and it will have X rate limit reset. So the URL in this case will be body.url comma the custom shot will be empty expiry will be body dot expiry and rate limiting is 10 and you want to reset so rate limit uh, remaining basic 10 is basically how many number of times you want uh, the user to be able to call this api rate limit reset uh, i'll just fix the spelling for reset this is basically after 30 seconds you want to reset uh, the limit so that the user after the 30 minutes are over he can again get a 10 rate limit so that he can use it 10 more times after the 30 minutes is over so every 30 minutes he's using it 10 times the api so here you remember that we are decrementing uh, the value for the rate limit but uh, this value right is for uh, so that you come to know how many times the user is using that API but I again need the value so I'll again need to fetch the value because I want to perform some operations on it and um, <clears throat> the way I'm going to do it is I'll, I'll say r2.get database.ctx comma c.ip and I'm going to say result And now I want to work on the response dot x rate limit remaining. So I'm going to say x rate remaining comma blank character is equal to string convert dot a to oi and value. So whatever value you fetch from the database, you want to get that in your response dot rate limiting right you're setting that value right now <clears throat> after decrementing it so uh, you also want the ttl so you'll say ttl comma is equal to r2 dot ttl this will help you get the ttl value from the database so you'll say database dot ctx comma c dot ip dot result <clears throat> and now you want to calculate the value of the uh, rate limit reset how many minutes are left basically so you'll say response dot x rate limit reset ptl divided by time dot nanosecond time dot minute And you'll say custom shot. If the user had given any custom shot, you'll say get environment. 
basically, if, uh, in case you haven't figured it out, this is the one that we're creating right now. We'll create it using the domain, which we'll get from the environment file, .env file, the domain. In my case, it's local 3000, but when you make this program live on AWS or anything, the, uh, the IP address or the domain name is what you can put here. So you'll have your domain name plus slash plus ID. So when somebody will create a shortened URL on our program, it will look like this. So it will be localhost slash the ID. Now you remember the ID will be either uh, the custom URL shortener that the user is going to pass, right? The code that we wrote in the last video, which is this custom short that the user is going to pass. Or if the user doesn't pass any custom short, it will be basically uh, a unique UUID string. That's what's going to happen here. So that's how you create the custom shot uh, inside this response. And you're going to return c.status, fiber.status, okay, dot json, and going to send the response. Make sense? So that completes our short.co file. <clears throat> We've created a complete response object. And we also set the value for TTL, we've set the value for rate limit reset, custom short, and rate remain. At the same time, our rate is uh, you know, reduced and we've, set, we've stored that data also in our database. That how many uh, you know, minutes are remaining for this user and how many uh, more times he can use the, um, the API. So a short not to go file is complete and all the other files are also uh, complete. Um, I see a small issue here. You can see a squiggly line here. That's basically saying that we need to put a comma at the end. And once you save this file, you will have three more issues uh, coming up in short.go. Now, I can't see all of the issues, but I do see a couple of issues. Uh, <clears throat> one of them has to do with the comma here on line 95. And then at the response in the last line, you need a comma here as well. So uh, those two issues went away, but it's saying that there, that there are nine plus issues. That means there's a lot of uh, <clears throat> issues. And that's mostly to do with uh, that we have not installed uh, imported fiber here. We have not imported Redis here. We have not imported string convert package here. So let me take care of all of that. Don't worry. So first, uh, like I said, you know, we'll work on our Docker file first <clears throat> because that's a little important. I want to you know, uh, finish that first and then we'll sort out all the issues in the next video and also the Docker Compose file. Now in the Docker file, <coughs> you want to firstly get your um, Golang image. So I usually use the Golang Alpine image. And we'll say as builder. Then you want to create a folder for your build. So whenever you build it, you want to store it in a build folder, right? So you'll say mkdir slash build. And you want to add it to the build folder. You want to set it as your work directory. So you'll say work dir slash build. Awesome. So at least the basics have been set for our uh, Docker file. Now uh, you want to say run this command, which is go build. So firstly, just like uh, without Docker, you you do go build main.go and then go run main.go. That's what you're doing here inside the Docker container. So you say go build minus O main. And you wanna have a stage two now. So I'll say stage two. You wanna get from Alpine You want to firstly add a user, so you'll say add user minus h minus t minus h slash app slash app user. So you'll add a user first and then we'll switch to that user. So you'll say user app user and we'll copy our entire application and then copy from builder. So it's say copy from Builder. inside build you have your main so when you create a build right when you say go build main.go or main whatever <clears throat> here uh, there's a space here so main and then space.
space whatever is there will be built right the main dot go file mostly once you create a build right uh, it will exist as an exe file inside your build folder exe or any other type of uh, executable file so here we'll say slash app slash copy from this to this now you want to set your work directory to app and you want to expose your uh, port 3000 and you want to run this command you want to say main which will basically run your uh, main file so your docker file is quite straightforward and quite easy right not much that we're doing firstly we're running the go build command then we're running the main file command and then we're exposing our 3000 and that's that's about it and that's the main thing that's happening here so with this i'll end this video and in the next video we'll take care of our uh, issues that we can see the the visual the visible one at least then we'll work on a docker.compose file then we'll run our program and all the issues that come with that we'll fix all of them uh, and then we'll just um, you know run it on our local machine and then we'll test the api so if you have uh, been around for this long that's great i mean i hope you're learning quite a bit if you have any issues you can put it in the comments below if you have any uh, suggestions also you can put in the comments below you can connect with me on linkedin i have my linkedin um, account profile link in my description box and do subscribe to the channel because i come up with awesome content like this thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video